With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome, friends and allies, to the Exploring More podcast. I'm Michael Thompson. I'm with Jeff Andreessen, our Director of Exploration <laughs> and co-pilot, S.J. Jennings. I don't know where I'm at. I'm back in the navigator's seat, I guess, somewhere. Where are we going without the navigator? That's right. I'm going to try to keep us moving to where we think we're going, and we'll see if we get blown on or off course or what's going to happen. But listeners, if you're with us now and you're joining us, we're starting part four of a four-part series. I just want to beg that you go back and grab the first three but glad you're with us if you're a first-timer. This is a series on exploration and the significance of it as a kingdom man or woman. It's absolutely essential, critical. Yeah, I don't want to even start reviewing because it would take way too no, long. Just, but Jeff was talking about just a minute ago how he loved the opening of the Exploring More podcast series. You want to read that quote again? C.S. Lewis says, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along the journey, but he takes great care that we don't mistake any of them for home. And I love listening to that, but I wonder, what do you hear when you hear that? And maybe that would help a lot of the other people here understand. Yeah, because that sounds like a journey. That sounds like, you know, exploration, right? I mean, that's what that quote makes me think of in many ways. It takes me to the idea of domestication. Lewis is saying, don't get too comfortable. Don't get domesticated. As a matter of fact, you need to pack light. You need to be a pilgrim. Mm. You need to be a pioneer. I don't want you to settle for something. You said it in an earlier podcast series, there was a quote about predictability. Do you remember that? Right. When God called Abraham, he robbed him of predictability. (laughs) I mean, I can't think of anything more in line with domestication than predictability. There's a great story. I actually love it. It's quirky. It's called Stranger Than Fiction. It's a film about an IRS agent named Harold Click, played by a guy. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Thank you, man. And he just lost it. But, oh my gosh, it's just this predictability that he lives in. He brushes his teeth, you know, 29 times. You were talking about the other day about how many times you got to chew. (laughs) You can't, are you counting how many times you're chewing? Because somebody said 28 is the first stage of of optimum. 28 chews is optimum. First stage of digestion. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, we're not going to explore digestion this time, but <laughs> but but I think domestication. I want is, to talk about that. I don't want to be. I don't domesticated, I, predictable. Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. And you know what? Another word, Jeff. I'm going to throw it in since we got two. I'm going to give you three. Practical. I don't want to live practically. Useful. I, I, I don't want God yeah. to be yeah. practical. I don't yeah. want seven practical steps to anything. Yeah, that's not going to make for a great tombstone. You know what I love about God? He uses me so well. <laughs> We've said this Come before. on, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be yeah. useful in yeah. that well, way, you know? Just a tool in the master's hand. I mean, I get it. I get it. I yeah. get it. I get it. But keep going, friend. If that's kind of where you're hopeful to be, there's a lot more in terms of being a kingdom man, a kingdom woman. Yeah. Really, I can't get away from when Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. And you said it a couple podcasts ago. I mean, Jesus takes these guys for three years on the ultimate camping trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're on the move. And they they're, are in they're, boats. They, I love they that are in, visual. There are storms. They yeah. are ran out of town. They see unbelievable things. My doctor gave me a great book. It's called Go Wild, and it's a medical book. But they're looking at everything from Alzheimer's disease to diabetes due to a sedentary, domesticated lifestyle. Yep. This is the thing that causes that inactivity, causes those diseases. So there's the idea that it actually costs more yeah. not to be on the adventure, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to confess, I used to have artificial intelligence. Not anymore. Right. I want exploration. That I don't want to be an AI yeah. man yeah. where I'll get all my information from Google. Don't get mad, SJ. Where I get all my information from the scriptures. Yeah. Wow. I don't want to get all my information about God. From the scriptures. I want all the information in the scriptures to show me yeah. and point me 
to an intimate relationship with God. That's what I want. Yeah. But I don't want all my information coming from the scriptures. So, so I, I want to experience and encounter God in ways that absolutely wreck me. Mm. That's not my favorite prayer, by right. the way. But it takes my false self off yeah, and right. takes me out of that place and into more and more and more and more who I am in the kingdom, right. an image bearer of God and how I uniquely bear his image. That exploration, I'm on that. It's a living word, right? So listeners, if you take umbrage to what Michael just said, email us at exploringmore at zoe.org and we'll argue with you. No, we'll well, they didn't we'll have talk this, with, they didn't have to talk with you about it. No, they right. didn't. Right. Right. They, they were writing it uh, <laughs> by their lives, the way they lived. That's Somehow exactly. they heard from God. And, without... why would I, and why would our lives be less? Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. Are they extraordinary or are they examples mm -hmm. of what it looks like to live and walk with God? Yes. We, we know the answer, right? It's extraordinary, but that's the kind of life that we're invited and, to and have And what with I would God. say is, is if your life is a domesticated life, your calling is irrevocable. It's in there. It's buried. It's always going to be there. When we went out west, we planted all the domesticated foods. So we planted the wheat and the corn and rice and things like that. And they went back and they tried to bring the grasses back from the Midwest that used to be there. And they tried forever to do it and they couldn't replicate those seeds. And so what they did was they scorched the field. And when they scorched the field, the heat of the fire actually fired up the seeds that were buried for 30, 40, 50 years. Dormant. That yeah. were dormant and mm -hmm. they came back up. And wow. that's what did it though. It was the heat of that fire mm -hmm. brought back those fields. Hmm. I would love for it to be another way in my life, the kingdom seeds that have been planted in me. But yet Paul talks about the fiery ordeal, the trials, the struggles. I mean, we have so many examples of this whole idea of why interpreting it well is critical to exploration, mm -hmm. right? right? And even then, Columbus being blown off course becomes this crazy thing to his yeah. credit. Yeah. And there's still argument as to that he discovered America. Well, you know, there were people already here. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> but that's the beautiful thing about discovery. It's new to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can be new to your family. It can be new to your marriage and learning new ways and knowing that Jesus is going to do some new things in you and with you. That's what we're talking about. Mm. That's yeah. That's why exploration has really no end in its series. Here we are, a four-part series, but... <laughs> we could keep going is, just like the Freedom Series. This is yeah. the Christian life, this yeah. exploration, yes. and it's about freedom, to tie those two together. Yeah. It's about getting free, fiercely guarding that freedom, knowing that it's opposed. And the exploration is the journey that you're going to take to becoming more and more of who you are, who you truly are, and why God has put you here. And I like what you just said. It's so powerful. The calling on your life is irrevocable. And yet, it could lay long and dormant. Right. And that's our Thoreau quote. Most mm -hmm. men live lives of quiet desperations mm -hmm. and go to their graves with a song still in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't be that. Don't be, don't that, be guy. that man. You know, no. we talk often about epic stories. We use film clips at our weekends to help bring the scriptures to life. And all of our stories that we enjoy and have shared much about, none of them are these guys preparing, let's say, for a long journey, and then they go on this long journey, and it was uneventful and easy. And they sailed on to their port, pulled into port, were received with fanfare and parades, and lived happily ever after. Nobody finds a story like that no. intriguing. Yeah. And you won't find or it in the scriptures it either. I'm sorry. It does not draw you in. So it's the thing that draws you into this epic story and what makes exploration epic is the challenge. Yeah. It's the adversity you have to overcome. And I think, Michael, <laughs> yeah. what you're promoting is we are constantly on a journey of discovery and we're constantly in a position where, yeah, maybe someone else has discovered that through the Holy Spirit about themselves, about their heart before, but it's new to you in this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and there's right. good information out there, SJ. But if you're reading a book on the seven things to solve your life, don't read it. Don't turn another page. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Don't. Stop, stop, stop. Don't stop use it. it to balance a table or something, you know, put it underneath the leg of <laughs> yeah. a table. Or... But I have to confess, you guys, that's how I saw my life mm -hmm. as a problem to solve rather than a mystery to enter into with Journey God. to be on. Yeah. I thought God was grading me, grading the papers daily, and I was coming up short. Yeah. And so that shift was monumental for me. That's what I mean by leaving the domesticated 
yeah. life. We were talking about clips. Have you guys seen the old film? I think it's 1983 or four or five, somewhere there. Never Cry Wolf. Yeah. Oh, my, one of my favorites. Okay. Rosie Greer. So describe the scene, because I have it right here for a quote, but what's going on there well, uh, between Rosie uh, and Tyler? Yeah, he's talking about adventure. These people on the lower 49th parallel are sitting there in front of their TVs. But what's really going to get them out of there, if I remember the quote right, is adventure, right? Yeah. That's what he swings out of the airplane there. So let me read it to you. So here's the quotes of what happens. So Tyler is this scientist who wants to go study the Arctic wolf. And in that, has no idea that they're being hunted and poached. Yeah. That's going to be a whole wow. ingredient that he finds. But he has this bush pilot you know, in Alaska, just imagine two men in this little cockpit, very little room behind them. They the, fire the, up they're the flying through the mountains yes. and it's foggy. And yes. let me tell you, you do not want to be in that situation. Yeah. That's how people get killed. Mm. So Rosie's, you know, hired to deliver Tyler, this little scientist who's going to go hopefully write about the wolves. And this adventure comes after him and his desire to observe them, not just read about them from other people's findings, but he wants to go and set out to write his own dissertation. Okay, so he contracts with Rosie. So they're up in the air, and Rosie's starting to bust on him a bit. You know, you're all the same, you know, coming out of here, this, that. And then Rosie says to Tyler, hey, we're all of us prospectors up here, eh, Tyler? Scratching for that one crack in the ground. He thinks Tyler's coming out there for Alaska gold, you know, so he says, we're all prospectors. Scratching for that one crack in the ground. Never have to scratch again. I'll let you in on a little secret, Tyler. The gold's not in the ground. The gold's not anywhere up here. The real gold is south of 60, sitting in living rooms, stuck face in the boob tube, bored to death. Bored to death, Tyler. You know what he does next? The engine fails, and that's what then ensues, this whole exchange. And, and then Rosie says, Tyler, here, take the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and he opens the door, right, of the little plane. He's, what's wrong? Boredom, Tyler. Boredom. Boredom. That's what's wrong. Tyler's asking about the plane. Right. Yeah. Rosie's yeah. still philosophizing, right? Yeah. On the because he knows 48. what's wrong with the plane. Boredom, Tyler. Right? Boredom. That's what's wrong. And how do you beat boredom, Tyler? Adventure. Adventure, Tyler. And then he goes, Where are you going, Rosie? <laughs> <laughs> he's opening the door and he's walking out. Are to you jumping start, out? He's going to start the plane again. <laughs> oh my gosh. How undomesticated is that. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Right? It's, that's beautiful. And it's the last thing my Tyler thinks he wants. Oh, yeah. But it's the most significant thing that he needs. Mm. So God comes to Abraham. Yeah. So God comes to Moses. So God comes to David. Yeah. This is how yeah. exploration begins through enormous interruption. Them. Yeah. So you've been diagnosed. You found something that's going on with your children or your parents. I mean, this invitation is very risky. Oh, man. And yet, if Google is your greatest source of knowledge and information, you're settling. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Google's not helpful. Come on. I yeah. mean, I'll Google something in a minute, I'm sure. That quote from yeah. Never Cry Wolf. Right. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. here, I said it earlier in the podcast, you can have Google or you can have God. You got to. You yeah. got to get out. And, you got to get and out. answers. You know, so well, American yeah. Airlines is getting these brand new Airbuses and they've got these sharklets on the wings and they, these airplanes look like they're going 800 miles an hour just standing on the ground. And we're looking at flying these eventually and the cutover date comes and we can now fly from US Air. We can fly these brand new airplanes at American but we're not going to send us through simulator training. They basically give you a program on your computer of the differences from the airplane you're flying to this new one. And that's pretty much it. So I'm not scheduled to fly them. So I haven't even looked at the program. I get down to Miami on one storming night and I'm going to go from Miami to Detroit. They call me scheduling. He says, Hey, forget about Detroit. We're sending you to SAP, the three letter identifier. And I'm like, SAP? I said, you mean SAT, San Antonio? They said, no, SAP. I said, where's that? San Pedro, Honduras. By the way, it's going to be in one of the brand new airplanes. And they're waiting for you down there. The airplane's fully loaded. The guy's timed out. They're full. They're just, you just go on there and take it to, and they're like, I, 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 don't, I don't want to go to Honduras. <laughs> I've, I've never been to Honduras. My co pilot's never been to Honduras, and we've never flown this airplane before. Uh, this is the first time in my life I actually wanted to go to Detroit, right? You know? Yeah. And uh, so Sorry I, if you're I, listening I'm, I'm Detroit, walking to the, but yeah. I'm walking to the uh, airplane. I'm calling the union. I'm like, can I do this? And they're like, oh, my God, we're rolling the dice here. You know. Well, anyway, we go down there, and I get the paperwork. I go down to 
the airplane. There's the co-pilot in there with his charts out looking at everything. And he says, do you want to go through this program? I'm like, we don't have time for that, man. Let's push back, start some engines. Let's go. And it wow. was a storming night. And so I find myself real fast over Cuba dodging thunderstorms. And we're looking at the approach coming up in Honduras. And we've got one way we can get in off the ocean because of the mountains. We can't come in from the west. We've got to land east. And I'm looking at the challenge of this, and I turn to God in the cockpit, and I'm like, tell me you're with me. Tell me you're with me right now. And this is where his voice came so clear. You love this. And I'm like, yeah, I actually do. I was made for this. I wouldn't have chose that. I wouldn't right. have chose to do it that way. Right. And I think that's how the adventure comes to us. I'm basically fairly fearful of those challenges that are out there. And he puts me in these situations to remind me, oh, yeah, you were made for this. And it's not a recklessness that we're talking about. No. Because that's an enormous totally. responsibility. 267 <laughs> yeah, passengers right. or whatever, that's the funny. crew, this yeah. and that. It's not a reckless desire for that kind of an adventure, but... Again, you're made for that. There's something about the way that you're wired that you come alive in that. For you, it's flying that Airbus and coming in that one way, you know, because you can't come in the other and dodging the thunderstorms. But for others, it's other challenges you yeah. have to overcome. Oh, yeah. So the invitation to such stories, this is back to one of our favorite comedians, Brian Regan, right? The, the <laughs> me monster, you know, upping the story. So I'm not oh, going yeah. to one up you. I'm actually going to one down you. <laughs> okay. Because I told you guys, the listeners, allies, that I had uh, been in London recently. So one day, as a Sunday morning early, we're going to go out to the Downton Abbey Castle. I mentioned that. But what I didn't tell in the story was who drove us there? Me. Wrong side of the road. Oh, wrong side no of the way. Wrong, wrong oh, side of the car. Courage. Wrong that's, side of the car. That's courage. Wrong, so it's not a Boeing, right? Yeah. It's a little, I don't know what it was, but it's an Inspector Cluso car. And there's a bunch of those. <laughs> so we're, so we leave early and there's not a lot of traffic. And if you've ever driven in the UK, there's far more traffic circles than there are lights. And roundabouts, you, you, they roundabouts. Call them. I remember Chevy Chase, right? He's doing that roundabout. Hey, kids, there's Big Ben. <laughs> again, again. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. I mean, my passengers were Robin and Abby, and we're going from London to the castle. So it's about an hour drive. We seem to stretch it into about an hour and 45 minutes, getting off a couple of places we shouldn't. I mean, maps are helping. And, but Jeff, it was like that. And I bring it up to say everything that I had been conditioned to think and do driving in the States was not going to help me there. Right. right. I right. had to be reoriented into something else. Yeah. And there were a couple times it was close. It was risky most of the time. Robin is helping. She's my helper. <laughs> How'd that work out? This, we're still married. It's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, we're still alive for crying out loud. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. you're having to go against a lot of conditioning. And I bring it up to say what I find true about that and what I find true about this new airplane story, you're going to have to learn some things and you're going to have to let go of some old yeah. ways. They're yeah. not going to serve you at this stage and at this place in your story. Yeah. What I knew about parenting at 25 and 30 is not helpful now. Mm-hmm at what I'm doing in parenting at 55. Some things carry over, you know, two yeah, hands on the sure. wheel, <laughs> brakes, and and it was a stick. That was the other thing I did oh, bring fun. up. I mean, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, fun. I'm telling so you, you. And you've probably never shifted a manual transmission car with your left hand in your yeah, life, right? No, it was just a mess. Yeah, yeah, it was a beautiful mess. And so, Oof. and I can't tell you how many times I grinded my friend's car in, from, you know, fourth to third <laughs> rather than fifth. <laughs> right. Why is it, who did this car? You know, yeah. I want to blame the manufacturer, but oh my gosh, how often we want to blame the manufacturer for mm. the circumstances that we find ourselves sure. when wow. this is an invitation. So what I'm saying, Jeff, now about the London driving experience is today, it's a fun story. I enjoyed oh, telling yeah. it. In that moment though, there was some crisis times and truth be told, we get off of the main intersections and we get into now the country roads, which have the hedgerows. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. This is a uh, confession store. You can't really fit two cars. And the UK drivers, they don't mind driving quick. They're not speeding, but they're quick on acceleration and quick on braking is what I was experiencing. But you're coming around some of these corners, you don't know what's going on. So I make some room for this guy kind of coming at me. 
And over on the shoulder is this old piece of sidewalk. I mean, there's these hedgerows. Oh, I thought you were going to say old lady. No, no, no. Okay, no, sorry. I, no <laughs> thank you. But I hit this old cement with this little car. Ooh. And it hops, blows the tire, and I'm on the side of the road with In my daughter. In between the hedgerows. Yes, with my daughter and wife. This guy behind us sees. I have to back up, you know, backing up on a blown tire. So my wife says, should we call somebody? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, my masculine heart. Heck no. Just, We're changing the tire. That's right. <laughs> I've been in the pits of the Indianapolis 500. We can do this in no time. So let me tell you what I earned over the next 45 minutes as we got back in the car and left. She goes, I didn't know you knew how to do all that. Wow. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. I got AAA for you, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> I want you to be okay. Yeah. But the test, the whole thing right. had redemptive qualities about it. I didn't want to be in that situation, but right. I got to be in that situation. And yes, some of it was accidental and it was, what are we going to do now? And I feel like that is a theme in this idea of exploration. I mean, you are a Lewis and Clark scholar, Jefferson scholar. It's what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The current's here. We can't get across. You got right. called into action and all the things that were in you, you were able to overcome mm -hmm. in that situation. I got and, this. And you're yeah. out in the yeah, field. Yeah. I know. think I got this. Yeah. So what are we going to do now is the question. Well, we're going to take a break. Okay. And then we're going <laughs> to come feed, back and we're going to come right back slide, okay. and we're going to go into some stories about And then I want to ask Jeff some questions. I got a series of questions. Okay. Listeners, we'll be right back. Hey, Exploring More podcast listeners, this is SJ. I just want to take a second and invite you to one of our upcoming events. The Heart of a Warrior Encounter West is taking place Thursday, September 12th through Sunday, September 15th at Young Life's Trail West Camp in Buena Vista, Colorado. During the weekend, we have three main objectives. We want to help a man get his heart back, teach him how to fight, and show him where the battles are. To see Christ come for a man's heart and what God is up to in validating a man, initiating him, and calling him into the larger story is truly a glorious thing. It's a fierce journey for every man, but one that desperately needs to be taken. I personally have enjoyed more than a dozen of these Heart of a Warrior weekends, and God keeps coming back again and again for my heart and showing me more and more areas that he wants to come into and redeem and restore. Again, it's September 12th through the 15th in Buena Vista, Colorado. Visit zoe.org forward slash events, zoe.org forward slash events for more information. And I hope to see you out there in Colorado. Welcome back, Exploring More listeners. It's good to be talking about exploration with our friend, Jeff Andreessen and S.J. Jennings. Yeah, we want to continue to explore about exploration and, and how it works in the kingdom. And yeah, Jeff, we got about 15, 20 minutes or so that we want to try to do our best to put it all up there in the sky. I mean, it's such a big idea. I've got several questions I want to ask you, but just I want to ask you adventure, exploration. What would you tell to the younger you now 40 years later, the 20 year old oh, yeah. Jeff Andreessen. We love the film The Kid. Bruce Willis yes. goes back. Yeah. Actually, the mini me, literally, he enters into the story that he's living. Russell Durwitz gets to tell young Rusty Durwitz something about how this story is going. And it's a great story if you haven't seen the film The Kid. But what would you say, Jeff, to your younger at this stage in your journey? Oh, I would go with the idea that. Everything's going to be okay. Don't try to earn it. Just play your game. Don't try to play to win. Just play. But play wholeheartedly. You know, I know that's true because we were having dinner the other day, a bunch of us. And remember Jeff talking about the tennis? Tell the tennis story. It's the same advice. Oh, yeah. Right? But you needed it at 60. You and your doubles partner and who you're facing, right? It's the same the yeah. advice you'd give to your, you're taking that advice now, which I love. I love, love, love that that's true now for you. It's so true that you could tell your 18 year old right. self that. Well, tell that story real okay, quick. Okay. So that's taking a swing at something where you were wounded in the past, right? You can come back at that. God wants to come back at that. And I can remember playing in college 
and I was playing doubles on my team. I had already played singles and I was playing doubles, but the entire match fell to our doubles match. So everyone circled around to watch the end of this. And with that sort of pressure, it was easy to cave yeah. in that and more try to push the ball instead of hit the ball. And in actuality, we won. Fast forward, I'm probably now in my 50s and I'm playing. But you knew you played a lesser. Oh, yeah. The outcome was, oh, oh, was I, favorable, but you knew you, uh, knew you I, didn't I, play. We, we lost that match and we lost oh. the, the game. And I was carrying something in that that I didn't know I had. Okay. Now I'm in my 50s. I'm playing USTA and the entire match falls down to my singles match. And I lose the first set like six to two, but. I'm like, I could beat this guy. Second set, I win 6-4, and it comes down to the third match. And I'm sitting there with this idea of, I think I could beat this guy, but now everybody circles up around me. All right. Wow. Now keep in mind, I've got mm -hmm. I've got a friend who was a professional tennis coach, Pablo, and a lot of people know him from Facebook and things like that. But Pablo says to me, he says, you know, tennis is just a picture of life. So when he said that, it was a little bit disturbing to me mm. because I'm probably living this way. He says, you're playing not to lose. I knew he was right, but because he was right, I didn't really like him at that particular moment, <laughs> right? Don't tell me that. And I'm like, well, I should play to win. And he goes, no, you just play. Yeah, play to play. Just play. Mm -hmm. Play your game. Mm. Take your swing. That's all. And so I wound up beating this guy with a drop point, and I went to Pablo with that idea of what happened to me, and he said, Jeff, there's still a young place in you from back in college that you're dealing with, and you need to learn not to play to lose, but to play. And there's a big difference there. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's good. That goes back to the London car trip, right? There's some things that's not going to serve me here. I needed to get rid of my way of driving right in America, it's not going to help me now. And I think when you're talking about matters of the heart, you really are stepping into some big uncharted territory for most men and women and to explore what is it that's formed what I believe about myself, about God, about what to yeah. do here. I mean, fear comes after all of us. It's one of Satan's best. It really is one of his best delivery boys. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have a system where when guys play it safe, it almost looks like they're being spiritual to play the domesticated lifestyle. There's a much wilder God out there. And there's certain guys out there that are talking about this wild God. Okay. okay. Wait, this, wait a minute. Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> no, this is a whole... Hang on. So I, it's my show. Hang on. So, all right, all right. you know, I'm teasing. It's our show. But listen, what you just said, and we probably have to put this next, SJ, and we've got to get some guys like Jeff and Gary and Tom and... Stan Cabbage and stuff. And we got to get some more mics because this is a huge idea. Right now, men's ministry is on the brink of an incredible revolt. And I mean, for the good. Yeah. It's another reformation is what it is. An another emancipation. Uh, yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the opportunity ahead of us, as much as it was important, Promise Keepers was important. And so are men's fraternity and so are the things that have worked for the last 30 years at helping, helping men in their identity. But there's something that is inviting us to deeper water. Yeah, You can't use the old recipes, not right now. And I'm not talking about with the 20-year-olds. I'm not talking about that at all. You can't use the old recipes with the 60-year-olds today. You right. can't use the old recipes. There's uncharted water in masculinity. It's actually very consistent with some things that Jesus has been doing for a long time. And we have to explore pioneer on the horizon, moving towards what does it mean to be a man today? Mm -hmm. There's some ancient things we need to recover for this generation and these several decades, but oh my gosh, what you just said just provokes what's coming and what we have to not only get ready for, but walk with God as if we could do it on our own. Mm -hmm. The kind of liberty, the kind of freedom, the kind of exploration, the exploration, yeah, that that we're being invited into as men. We want as many good men with us as we can. We have to have them. We can't do it alone. And yet it's a narrow road and few will find it. Yeah. Nonetheless, this is what we love to talk about, want to be about. I mean, there's so much in that provoking. You just provoked both SJ and I. <laughs> what were you going to say? You know, it came to me in the first half of this episode and it just landed on me again. 
There's a movie, going back again to movie clips, there's a movie called The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And there's an older version of it from like 1947, but there's a newer version of it with Ben Stiller. And he lives this life. He's actually in charge of the negatives that photographers send in for Life magazine. And there's one particular negative that goes, to his knowledge, missing. And so he goes on this journey of trying to figure out where it is. And he's panicking because Life magazine is downsizing and and becoming Life magazine online versus a printed publication. And so he has this unique relationship with the photographer that sent the slide. And so much of his life, he's daydreamed about being in adventure. So even as he's standing and talking to people, he kind of glazes over and goes off to another place. One person even asks him when he does that, where do you go when you do that? Mm. So when this situation comes about with the missing slide, he decides, you know what, instead of daydreaming, I'm just going to go out and find this photographer. So it's rumored that he's somewhere in the mountains of Nepal trying to photograph a snow leopard which they call the ghost cat. So he goes on this unbelievable journey. He starts his journey in Iceland or Greenland, one or the other, one of those really cold places somewhere between here and Europe. So for him to get on a plane, that's a big step for him to even just do that. And then he finds himself in this little bar. He finds out that this guy, this photographer he's chasing is out on a boat. And so he's got to get in a helicopter that's going to deliver mail to the boat. The pilot is in this bar and he is drunk beyond (laughs) belief, you know, but he's a massive dude. So he's faced at this moment. I remember he's standing at the door outside the bar and the helicopter's warming up. And there's a moment where he just says, you know what? I'm jumping in. And he runs to the helicopter. And as it lifts off the ground, he jumps in. in yeah. This moment of courage for him. Yeah. And so the men that you're talking about, Michael, and the reformation, the reckoning that's coming, the new emancipation we're talking about, I think in this exploration journey that we've been talking about, we want to encourage not only the people that are listening, but ourselves as well, jump on the helicopter. Yeah. I yeah. think too about Wild at Heart. John Eldridge's book from 20 years ago now, even on the cover, the icon of it is a guy jumping jumping from peak to peak, you know, jump in, men, jump into this exploration. All you have to lose is more complacency, more sleeping. And God wants to call you awake in this epic journey. And honestly, we need you on the exploration with us. Yeah. Yeah, when you said a session or two ago, SJ, about the boats that stay in the harbor. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what they get? Barnacles. <laughs> <laughs> they get barnacles, yeah, they get man. moldy, they yeah, rust, they I mean, leak. You know, they're built for the sea. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, and I think the opportunity to break the harbor and explore, you use the coordinates, story, journey, desire. We thank yeah. Gary. That's how he's yeah. oriented us to help navigate your life and your calling, the unique thing that God's given you to sing to the world. I mean, all of those ingredients, as we share them with men, we watch men go. I remember you said this for years. I didn't know what you guys were talking about. I just wanted 10 or 12 years ago, but I just wanted you to keep talking about it. Right. And then it became more your way. When you step into retraining the industry that you stepped away from, or that put you on the sidelines for a time, you had to catch up to. I think this is just this is the way the kingdom works. One of my favorite stories, when you look at Abraham going out beyond his maps and journeying with God into the unknown, was the Lewis and Clark journey. And these guys were literally going to move out beyond their maps. And so Jefferson has to teach Meriwether Lewis how to shoot his longitude by looking at the moons going around Jupiter. So how many of us could go out right now and look up in the sky and pick out Jupiter, right? Not only do they know where Wait, Jupiter let is. My, let me get my iPhone. I can but, do it. But, yeah, my yeah, star yeah, map. We got the app, star, right? star Wars yeah. app, right? <laughs> These guys are looking Sad at the moons true. going around to shoot their longitude right. and where they are. Uh-huh. But in order to do this expedition, it was going to be very rigorous. And so they had to choose young men for it. And these men weren't necessarily trained yet. 
And so as they started the expedition, they fell asleep on guard duty. They slept with the Indian woman and got syphilis, and they got drunk. And Lewis and Clark actually literally needed to beat these guys uh, into submission and training. But as the mission progressed and they went further out west, these men began to know whose footstep that was approaching the fire at night. Who could run the fastest when a message needed to be delivered from one party to the other? They knew who was the best shot mm-hmm. if a grizzly came at them, right? Sure enough. You know, I mean, they got to a point where they knew who took salt on their meat, who was snoring in the middle of the night. And these guys on the mission began to fall in love with one another to the point where they would have taken a bullet for one another. And you see this corporate taking of the land and how these men needed each other. And they realized that if it was going to be a success... They needed one another on this journey. And so they would sit in the campfire when things got really bad and the Indians were surrounding them. Whether they were going to live or not, they didn't know. But they talked about what they were going to do with the money that they got from this expedition, as if that was going to be the goal. But as they look back on their life, their greatest moment was when they were at the campfire, not knowing whether they were going to live or die. Those were the moments where they were most alive. Listeners and friends, When we read about such stories, or we actually have the privilege to watch them, I can think of 10 films that have that very sentiment about it. Yeah. It moves us. We want that. Oh, yeah. We watch Band of Brothers and we go, oh my gosh. Right. I watch Four Feathers. Totally. And we go, oh my gosh. We watch Braveheart. Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I want adventure. And and we watch it. We go, oh, I want that. Yep. I believe that's 100% true. 100% true. In the Walter Mitty clip, right? The Sean Penn characters in the film. Yeah, you know, he's saying, come, come. And it's the photograph starts to move. Wow. And say, right? Come and so we out see to adventure. how true that is, that invitation of Jesus. Come. Come with me. Let me show you better ways. Let me show you better routes. Let me uh, show you how to navigate your life through a kingdom grid that will take you to the end of these charts. And then you're going to get to walk with me some more. Because mm-hmm. I want to show you what's uncharted in your life. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, why does it sound so epic? Because, because it, it is. is so epic. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. is. And yeah. it's not domesticated. It's no, not. no. It I can't think be. about one of your favorite quotes, Michael, from Narnia. Is he safe? No. It's not safe. Right. But he's, but he's good. good. Yeah. I mean, it's not a safe journey to take. It's not going to be safe, but it's going to be so good. With regards to that Lewis and Clark scenario and all the epic movie clips we're talking about, I'm not sure if I desire more the adventure or the camaraderie, the brotherhood that these guys experienced. And I think that bond takes place not so much in the classroom, but on the field. Yeah, It's so much easier, it's been said, to find God in nature than the works of man. It's just getting out there that really takes that bond and solidifies it. And the good news as you're saying that, and that it's going to take adversity— to forge these things. The great thing I want our listeners to know is you don't have to go find that. It'll come. It's coming. Oh yeah. It'll find you. The storms are coming. (laughs) They're they're, they're forming out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And not all of them, like we want our listeners to know, not all of them are the enemy. Mm -hmm. Not every inconvenience is the enemy. There's a work of God that wants to move you from a comfortable or a practical place, something that you've learned. Now it's not going to serve you well on these roads. You're going to have to abandon what you knew about that plane so I can show you something new. I think that's that's the significant transition in a man's heart when he says, okay, that's what this is about. It's not about my bank account. It's not about everything being tied up neat in a bow. I go back to Rosie. That is a recipe for boredom. (laughs) And you know, like I do, predictability, bored men do dumb stuff. That's where the addictions. I mean, to this whole conversation, it is our longing for adventure that can get us into glorious places as well as get us into trouble. The man that wants to experience adventure but doesn't want to leave the couch or the recliner gets into video games yeah. or gets into porn. Yeah. Well, that's or, it. Or gets into overeating or gets into overdrinking. I mean, any number of ways you try to replicate what we're advocating, right? We're advocating that this is an adventure, this is an exploration, and you've got to get up and go do it. Right. But the enemy comes with all of these cheap substitutes and you get sucked into them, as we all have in some way, shape or form. I have a complete different aspect or approach to addictions. And it's not so much fighting the actual addiction is 
asking a man if he's caught in an addiction, whatever it is, is what adventure has God called you on that you said no that to? you're not in. That's yeah, right. what are you you're, trying you're to not avoid? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The answer might actually not be going back and trying to fight that thing. The answer to it might be going forward. And finding something that's worth living for. Mm-hmm. And, Once and you find for. that, you're yeah. too busy to do that other stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, now the landing gear is down. The end of the runway is in sight. We got a touchdown here. And I see, Michael, something up on your screen there. And I think it's absolutely an appropriate way to land the plane on our discussion about exploration. So I'm going to read this one ad from the 1913 edition of a London newspaper. And I want to make sure our listeners know that this is available. This leader's guide. Yeah is available to them for free on the website. So don't let me forget that. So this is the ad that appeared in 1913, and it was taken out by an explorer named Ernest Shackleton. Men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return doubtful, (laughs) honor and recognition in case of success. Ernest Shackleton, 4 Burlington Street. That's the one ad, okay? And let me just read- Sounds a, like working for American Airlines. A actually. little bit. <laughs> or Zoe, maybe. But so let me read a little bit yeah. of this commentary on the leader's guide, and then I want to wrap up a little bit, as SJ said. So legend tells that this was the advertisement posted in a December 1913 edition of a London newspaper, crafted by Ernest Shackleton. Though never substantiated, rumor has it that the next morning, Shackleton encountered a line of men that started more than a block from the door of number four Burlington Street. The Arctic explorer, uncertain there would even be one volunteer, never imagined there would be dozens. Boy, if there'd be anything said about my life, it would be that I would have been one of those guys. (laughs) Yeah. I think of Shackleton as a type of Jesus. If your gospel doesn't read that way, you're not reading the right gospel. Wow. I think many of us stepped into the kingdom to get saved. Not a bad idea. (laughs) Not a bad idea. But there's more. The great idea is he's not going to leave you there. Mm -hmm. He saved you for a reason. He saved you for a purpose. And you're going to have to go on expedition. You're going to have to enter the exploration of the kingdom with a guide, the spirit that he's going to put in you, and the spirit that wants to lead you through this story. And all along the way that you never mistake any of these great ends for home. Mm. He's going to continue to move you throughout this epic landscape. I mean, to deploy me into London with these five guys from the UK, we sat there that night. I shared with them just a perspective. I said, do you have any idea the odds that we would be sitting here around this fire together? Five guys from Durham, that's not near as groundbreaking, Mm -hmm. but a few thousand miles away, right, to be at that fire in the countryside of London to meet with these guys to validate and initiate and commission a man into the next stage of his story. And yet we get so normal to it, unfortunately. We don't see the extravagance that's taking place, and that's to our demise. I saw it last night when we were sitting there at the golf course, framed by those epic clouds. Mm -hmm. This sheltering storm was epic, and the round table was fantastic. I do want to leave with one idea. Abraham, the father of our faith, he came from an area that literally they worshiped the stars. What I love about our country, one of the things is is that we actually went to the moon. And when the astronauts got up there on Apollo 8 and they were in low orbit, they looked at the moon and they said, you know, this would be a desolate place to live. Then they read the opening to everyone was listening They opened with the account of Genesis. Yeah, that's right. And then they looked back at earth and they said, there is the good earth. That's the place that you want to be. And at the end of the Apollo mission, it was a New York Times writer who said, the great achievement of men on the moon is not that they made history, but that they expanded man's vision of what history might be. One moon landing doesn't make a new heaven and a new earth, but it has dramatized the possibilities of doing so. Wow, man, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that idea that there is a new heaven and a new earth, and it's attainable, at least in some measure, here. Yeah. For us in this stage of our life, as we've talked about exploration, 
it just occurs to me that it's important to recognize that we have discovery, we have enlightenment, we have a further up, further in available to us. Definitely. Yeah. And I want to know men. I want to know Jeff Andreessen's and S.J. Jennings and Scott Stan Cavages and Tom Benners and Jim Shanae's and David Burnett's and Greg Saylor's and more and more. I want to know men who have been to the moon. Hmm. I want to know men that have been to the moon with God, found God, and brought something back that to is. show me, to tell me, and then to invite me mm-hmm. to the next Apollo mission that they sign up. Sign up, because there's something there for you. I think this invitation is about that in a big, huge way. All that we've said is true, as it affords you the chance to sign up for an experience and an encounter with God, because that's the frontier in every believer's life. And yes, catching up on what you missed the first 30 years of your yeah. life is really critical. Seeing it anew yeah. so that you can then live more and more in the moment. He wants to heal you and restore you so he can turn you loose again and again and invite you to more and more exploration that you could be a kingdom guide. And the only ways you can be a kingdom guide is to go through the training. Right, right. You've got to have been there. You've got to have been there. You've got to have been to the moon Mm-hmm. several times. And then you start letting people solo. Mm-hmm. On these weekends, we take people to the kingdom. And then one day the hope is that they'll go solo. Yeah, And once they've gone solo, they're going to start bringing their friends and start telling their sons and daughters, telling their moms and dads, telling their spouses, you're not going to believe what God did when he took me to the moon. I had no idea I was going to find that out there. None. And yet he did all along. He put it there to be found. So He's a good father. This life is available. Thank you, friends and allies, for exploring with us the possibilities of adventure and exploration, all the ingredients that we talked about that's needed. We want to guide you in that exploration in hopes of one day you'll guide others. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jeff Andreessen. You're a good man. And hey, uh, well, appreciate what an honor. you. Thank you. Yeah. SJ, you want to give him the close? Yeah, absolutely. If you've got questions or comments, show ideas, email us, exploring more at zoe.org. Find out more about Zoe and this podcast on our website, zoe.org forward slash podcast. Thank you so much for being on this journey with us over this episodes about exploration. We hope you'll continue to explore more about what God has for you, what's next for you, what's out beyond the borders, plus ultra, right? Yeah. Uh, further totally. beyond. Pick up the leader's guide. Yeah. Other free uh, stuff. You on... visit our zoe.org forward slash store. We've got plenty of free resources there. You can check out the leader's guide if you want to lead a squadron of men into this message. We'd be happy to talk with you about what that looks like and come alongside you in any way, shape, or form we can. Thanks again, Jeff, for being with us, man. We had a it's really, fun. really it's great a time. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you next time on Exploring More. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on YouVersion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, With God, there is always more, and you were made for more.